Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. Uh, I wanted to continue a little bit on my discussion of uh, acesanthin, fermented acesanthin versus uh, algae grown acesanthin and um, what you find in nature and what has been produced um, chemically or synthetically. So um, I'm going to introduce to you this little chart here. Um, and this will just, you know, it gets a little complicated, but I'm going to make it real simple. <clears throat> so what you find in a wild salmon is what we call um, 3S, 3S, and that's called, called free acesanthin. And free acesanthin means just the molecule, that molecule right there, okay? Now, um, uh, so this is the acesanthin molecule, and on either end of that, you see the 3S, 3S, and, um, and that means it's natural. So what you get from algae produced acesanthin is 3S. And, um, and what we call 3S, 3S. And uh, that's the stereoisomers, what that stands for. Now, if you look at chemically produced or synthetically produced acesanthin, now what you've got is 3R, 3S. So that's not the same thing at all. Uh, you'll get some acesanthin. And by the way, what is acesanthin? It's the most powerful carotenoid in, in the world. So, you know, you talk about different uh, beta carotene, uh, lycopene, uh, even vitamin A, which is kind of beta carotene. There's alpha, beta carotene, alpha carotene. There is um, something called zeaxanthin, and there's cryptoxanthin, and cathoxanthin, and there's all these different carotenoids. Acesanthin is at the top. The most difficult one to produce is estesanthin and the most difficult one to find. And you will find that from algae produced acesanthin. So that's good. But the algae produced, which is this 3S, 3S, they have these esters or fat molecules on either one of the, on the, in each end. Um, so it's not really been proven, but I think really it looks like it really isn't as well uh, absorbed by the body. Um, I think with the esters or the esterified uh, acesanthin. Okay, so then we get the chem chemically produced, as I said, that's 3R3S. Well, you're not going to get nearly, that's not the true acesanthin molecule, it's part of it. So they build this, they kind of build it chemically. They uh, start with one structure and then they, um, you know, get a, a carbon molecule and then a hydrogen molecule and they build this thing. Well, you're not getting nearly as much acesanthin. And then there's something called fafia, fafia yeast produced, you look on the bottom there. So that is 3R, 3R. So that's not the real thing at all. So you want 3S. 3R is kind of like not really the, you know, it's not ready for prime time. It's really not, they're just not really, um, uh, you know, it's not real true acesanthin. It's kind of fake acesanthin. Uh, this is for fish feed. And even for fish feed, it's kind of substandard. Um, I don't want to make any starting rumors, uh, you know, like some, they were fed it to some fish and all the fish died. We don't know if that's true or not. There's been rumors out there. I don't think this would really kill a bunch of fish if he fed it to them, but it definitely is not true acesanthin. You're not looking at that really, that king of all carotenoids, 3S, or 3R, 3R, so that's Favis. That's not the, that's not acesanthin. That's not even close, to be honest with you. You're getting maybe 25% of the molecule. So is it really bad for you or anything? I don't think it's really bad for you, but it certainly isn't the true thing. What you're looking for is 3S, 3S, acesanthin. And we have, through our fermentation process, figured out how to produce really true acesanthin, the same that you would find in a salmon, because that's, or, you know, with a pink flamingo. That's the acesanthin coming out into their fe feathers because they ate so much of it. That's how they become a pink flamingo. Um, there's really no pink flamingos. There's just flamingos and their feathers turn pink. And so that's what you get from algae is the 3S, 3S. And this is what you get from fermented, our fermented acesanthin, which we ferment from yeast. So you end up with pure 100% uh, acesanthin. And as I mentioned last time, I took some of this pure acesanthin and ate it. It has no taste whatsoever. And here I've taken probably, I, I think the only person in the world ever to do this because nobody would ever do it. And everybody was also sitting at the table and went, did you actually just do that? And I said, yeah, you know, and it's too late. And um, they did have a big sample of some beta carotene that they had produced, fermented, and it looked beautiful, but it was like one big piece. And I, I just, I mean, I could have eaten that whole piece, let me tell you something because that's just the way Dr. Bob is. He likes to do that kind of stuff. 
So um, that explains why our asazanthin is pure fermented. A, a, you know, through fermentation, we produce the actual pure asazanthin molecule. This is a game changer. This um, meaning in the market, you've always had to grow hematococcus, and then you have to put it under stressful condition, which is an algae, and then you put it under stressful um, conditions, and then it begins to protect itself with this incredibly powerful antioxidant known as asazanthin. Well, we got a much better way to make it now. Um, there's nothing wrong with the algae produced asazanthin. It's great stuff. Um, but not nearly as pure. Now, if you look at this this one here, I'll, I'll show you this uh, one more time here. This is what you get. Our asazanthin is on the left, and it is 100% pure asazanthin. So you're looking at a big spike there. Now, you look on the right, that's algae produced, so we have to have an asazanthin molecule to know what it is. And if you look on, on that chart on the right, I mean, there's just very little asazanthin in there, and then there's all these other impurities. We don't know what they are. They're probably, some of them might be carotenoids. Um, you know, nobody's ever examined that. So you, the, all these years you've been thinking you're getting all this asazanthin from these um, gel caps that you take. You're not getting a lot of asazanthin. You're getting a little bit of asazanthin and all these other impurities. When I say impurities, they might be other carotenoids, but we don't know. They might be fatty molecules. We don't know. Um, is there anything wrong with it? No, it's not going to hurt you. It's not anything bad. It's just not pure asazanthin. And asazanthin, for so many things, your eyes, your skin, your immune system, your heart, your cardio health, health um, I mean, you name it, and there's just almost nothing that asazanthin isn't great for um, and really good, uh, you know, improve your health tremendously because it's the king, the king of all carotenoids. And carotenoids are pigments, you know. Uh, you know, you get carrots, that's why they get their name, carrot, from the word carotenoid, carotene. So that's what you got, and now we're able to produce it through pure, as, uh, pure fermentation, asazanthin, pure asazanthin itself through a fermented process, in which we do with the yeast. Um, that's kind of a secret process. I personally, um, I'm working with a company on this, so I really don't know. It's not anything I invented or anything, and, uh, but it, there it is. And uh, when I saw that this chart here, I mean, I just jumped up and down and I was excited. It's just amazing. This is a true market disruptor. This is going to come out and this is going to change the market completely for asazanthin and carotenoids. Because actually we can produce all these other carotenoids as well, beta carotene, lycopene, vitamin A, which is a form of uh, beta carotene. So anyway, there it is, Dr. Bob and asazanthin, the king of all carotenoids. I'll see you guys next time.